Hey everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about something I'm noticing in my own life that is so powerful. Like it's a big, juicy truth bomb that I wanted to share with you because I think you can probably figure this out in your own life as well. It's probably happening to some degree in your life because I think it's always happening. Let me back up. I have found that the biggest, most massive and meaningful breakthroughs happen right after we break through a fear and it's usually a long-standing fear now i want to put this in the context of our life purpose i believe we all came to this life with a blueprint i believe we all have work here to do that only we can do because there's only one us we are a snowflake in this regard we have this work and it is our life purpose and a lot of us sense that we have a life purpose we might not necessarily know what that life purpose is but we do know that we have one and as we draw closer to that purpose, whether that's writing or singing or motivating or coaching or healing or whatever, as we move in the direction of this purpose, the universe begins to do some interesting things. The universe starts throwing up these resistances or these challenges and often these fears. It's as if the universe is requiring us to demonstrate to it or to source energy or to God energy, whatever you want to call it, that we are truly committed to occupying the energy of our life purpose. The universe is saying, you sure you want to do this? Okay, break through this massive fear that you've had. And the curious thing is it's usually a fear that has been in you, living in you for about as long as you've been aware of your life purpose. For example, I've known since I was a teenager, early, like 13, 14, that what I wanted to do was to speak and to motivate. Back then I thought I wanted to be a preacher or a pastor, but I knew that I wanted to get up on stage and I wanted to talk to people about spirit. I always knew that. Around the time that I started figuring that out for myself, this complementary, that's not really how we should call it, this secondary fear began to arise. And it was the fear of actually getting up behind a microphone and speaking. I pushed through it as a teen. I would travel around and speak at churches and sing and things of that nature. I pushed through it in my 20s. I was a singer in a worship band and also a teacher. I taught women's studies and Bible studies and all sorts of things. So I pushed through my fear, but it was always there. And then something happened in my 20s, middle 20s, that was really devastating and completely changed the course of my path for quite some time. And in an instant, that little sort of nagging fear became an overwhelming, disabling fear. I remember being up on stage when I was about 25 and I was singing and I was overwhelmed with panic and anxiety. And I thought I was going to do something that I shouldn't do on stage behind the mic. This is something I would have never done. I don't even want to tell you what it is. It's so stupid. It's something I would never done, but it's as if I got paralyzed by the idea that it was possible that I could do it. And I got so fearful that they literally had to escort me off the stage. And after that, I never got back on. Years went by, two years, five years, 10 years. I never returned to teaching, to singing, and to doing all of these things. And because of that kind of spectacular failure, if you will, on stage in front of hundreds of people, I really withdrew from the idea of ever speaking publicly again. I kind of gave up my dream of getting on stage and teaching people and guiding people and ministering to people. I had friends over the years, over the decades really, tell me, hey, you need to go to Toastmasters or you need to take a course at your local community college on public speaking or you need to get a speech coach. You need to get over this because this is clearly what you're supposed to be doing with your life and you're letting your fear keep you down. But I was too afraid to even take the first step in the right direction. All of this began to change within the last few years. I actually got an intuitive reading from my then mentor in which she addressed this with me. And she said, it's gonna be very surprising for you. The first time you get up on stage to do whatever it is you're gonna do, it is gonna be like a snap. It's gonna be like something just shifts and it's gonna be easy. It's like leaving one room and walking into the next room. I heard this when she told me this and it really resonated with me and I believed it. I'm like, oh, that actually makes sense. And since that day I've gone on building and doing and 
meeting people, having students, having clients. Now, of course, I'm the founder of the Lightworkers Lab. We've got about 2,000 members and we're always teaching and reading and healing and doing all kinds of cool things in the lab. And I'm up all the time giving live broadcasts. And this is very easy for me. In fact, pretty good at it. <laughs> I have to say, I'm pretty good. I know how to talk to people in a live stream. But I also knew that the time was very fast approaching where I was gonna have to get back up on that stage again. In fact, that time is gonna be next month. October 27th, we are having the first retreat for the Lightworkers Lab and people are coming from all over the world to meet one another, to fellowship with one another, but also to meet me and to hear me speak and to give a workshop and things of that nature. Interestingly, I haven't been afraid of this at all. I've always felt like it was going to be walking from one room into another. Nonetheless, I have standards for myself. Do you know what I mean? If somebody's going to pay a registration to come across the world, to come and see me, I'm going to show up as excellent as I possibly can be. I'm going to have it together. I'm going to have so much for them that it's going to be a beautiful experience. I put that standard on myself for what it is that I do. So I finally joined Toastmasters this year. I joined Toastmasters and it's really cute. I live in the boondocks, the podunk part of North Texas. Hun, I can't see any neighbors. Every once in a while I hear gunfire. I'm in Texas. I got chickens. I got dogs. The Toastmasters group that I joined is also in the country and consists of really wonderful, heart-oriented people, simple people like me, who are just trying to perfect their abilities at public speaking. I gave my first speech, I don't know, maybe, was it a month ago? Maybe it was a month ago I gave my first speech and I thought I'd be really nervous and for like a day I was nervous because I was getting in my head about it. I was remembering myself on stage with that microphone so afraid that I was going to say something inappropriate. All right, I'll just tell you what it was. When I was 25 and I was on stage in the band, I was so afraid that as the pastor was praying over the tithe, I would lean forward into the mic and say, fuck all of you. <laughs> Or something worse. You're all whores. Like, I was so afraid. I would never say that. I was such a good Christian. That's well beyond my ken. I would never. But the possibility, because I had a mouth with, with a, and I had a voice, that I could possibly do that so disabled me that I had to be taken off the stage. It was crazy. But that's panic attacks for you. That's anxiety for you. <laughs> so that fear that I, that I did experience 20 years ago, I began to reaccess like the day before I was going to give my first speech at Toastmasters. I felt it all again. I got a little pissed. I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not doing that. We're not going down there. But I did feel it. And then I woke up on the day of my speech and it was all gone. In fact, it was replaced by this desire to just kill it. I'm going to rock it. These people have never seen a speech like they're going to get tonight. And I proceeded to go up and give a speech that was really, really great, if I do say so myself. I've got another speech coming up next week and I'm just gonna keep going, keep getting better. Here's my point though. The moment I joined Toastmasters, something I was so fearful to do for decades of my life, people have been telling me to do it for decades. The moment I did it, I think I got two actual business opportunities that rolled down the pipe. It was as if just facing the fears, being willing to face the fears, changed everything. For the first couple of months at Toastmasters, I didn't do anything. I just sat there, I listened to people. Sometimes I played a minor role, but I didn't do anything, but I showed up. I said, yes, I took the action step. I made a decision and I took the action step and the universe very quickly blessed me, cracked open everything and created a path for me. And now this year is on fire, on fire. I got so many things that I'm doing, that I'm excited about. I'm meeting so many fantastic people. Next year is going to be bananas. I hope to meet you. I hope to travel around the country and meet you and do my attunements, which are far out and fantastic healings directly from spirit. That's what I'm here to do. It's my purpose to get back up on stage and to talk to you about what spirit wants to talk about and to be a channel for these healings and these adjustments. I'm ready. The moment we face our fears, even if we fail spectacularly, by the way, the moment we do that, everything shifts and it's as if we create a new path for ourselves. So I'm asking you, first of all, do you know what your purpose is? Are you remotely kind of aware I should be writing this book or are you remotely kind of aware that, oh, I should be 
singing in this band or motivating these people or I should be a therapist? Do you understand? Do you have a sense of what your purpose actually is? Second, what are the fears that are attached to that? Because I'm starting to think that we have built-in fears that act as a mechanism which create breakthrough moments for us to achieve higher levels in our purpose. These fears, again, are usually long-term fears. They've been around since you've had an inkling of what your purpose is. What are the fears? I want to challenge you to say, I'm ready to break through those. Even if you're just going to go to a Toastmasters meeting and sit there for two months and do nothing, you're still showing up. You're still doing something. You're still letting the universe know, I'm here. I'm ready for the next level. And then let the universe do what the universe is going to do. I'm excited for the retreat next month. It's going to be blissed out and fantastic. Forget about it. Don't get me started. I'm getting excited. Getting excited. It's going to be so good. And it's going to be the first time for me that I'm back up on a stage and I'm not scared. (gasps) I'm so thrilled and I can't wait. Like as I even talk about it, I can feel the vibration of that which is going to be done in that moment of time at that retreat. And I just can't wait for it, man. I'm I'm excited. I want that for you too. Again, I believe that we all came to this planet with a blueprint. We have a map. There's something that we are here to do and only you can do it. I can't do what you can do. You can't do what I can do because you don't, you don't have the same life. You didn't have the same childhood. You don't have the same vocabulary. You don't have the same energy. You have your stuff. You have your goodies. You have your juiciness. You have your energy. That's what you bring to what it is that you're supposed to do. Face those fears, break through them, and up-level your life. Hey everybody, I just wanted to end by inviting you to my free online spiritual community called The Lightworkers Lab. If you're interested in finding your spiritual tribe, go to thelightworkerslab.com. Check us out, learn what we're about, and learn how you can join. Or just go to Facebook and search The Lightworkers Lab and ask to join. I also wanted to mention that every couple of months I offer an in-depth or a comprehensive spiritual or metaphysical class. And if you're interested in taking your spirituality and your connection to a whole new level, go to crystallandcompton.com slash spiritual hyphen classes. Check out what's coming up and join if you are so inclined. And to everybody, I just want to say that I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. God bless.